and I'm live. All right. Let's get this party started. Um, we got what I decided to do was go ahead and start. Let's put this over here. Wait, no. No, no. We'll put it up here. Well, don't let me miss any comments. Y'all let me know if, if y'all left a comment and I miss it. Um, anyway. I was going to go ahead and start uh, chapter two, even though I have not finished chapter ones yet. It's all cool. Uh, chapter two is on culture. Okay. Now, today in class, we are going to continue with chapter one, but uh, I was just going to go ahead and start with these. Um, let me make sure it's turned up. Oh, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and start with um, chapter two. PowerPoints. Let's see if I can do it right here. Will this work? So I can see your comments. If it works like that. Say hello if you're here. So I can see if my comment section will work. <gasps> Oops. Wait. I don't know. I think it will. Here, let me say something. Well. Now, let's get started. Chapter two, culture. Okay. I went on ahead to slide uh, number two from the PowerPoints. Uh, what I have going is the PowerPoints set up in front of me and my notes here. That way I can uh, you know, get the light out of my face. Um, that way I can tell you uh, what to, um, you know, point out the stuff that's going to be on the exam. So um, to start off with, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to get to culture shock in just a minute, but there is a question about culture shock. But let's first start with the definition of what culture is. OK, um, you know, culture versus society. You need to know the difference between those two. All right. Culture is, um, let's see, uh, language, beliefs, values, norms, behaviors, material objects you know, from a society. You see the difference? Uh, society is, uh, feels as, as a group, as one, um, they live together, they work together, um, and they become organized, you know, in the same territory or similar, you know, area of, uh, of uh, propinquity, spatial nearness. Um, however, with uh, our technology today, we can really um, speak to people all over the world. Does that mean they're included in our society? Questionable. I guess it depends on, um, I don't know. Do you have to have a, a what is it called? A, um, you know, a certificate saying that you belong to, for example, the United States. Therefore, you are part of that society. Well, there are smaller groups that could be called societies within the U.S. society. So, and like, you know, culture, there are different cultures located within the group that we would call the United States society. All right. So culture, again, is uh, learned. You're not born knowing that, um, you know, baseball and apple pie represent the United States. <laughs> You're not born knowing that. You learn it. Uh, and it is it is shared, you know, and it's, you know, passed down from generation to generation. Uh, and it includes behaviors, beliefs, attitudes, values, material objects, okay, that belong to this group. Uh, and there's a picture on the PowerPoint of apple pie and baseball. You know, is that a uh, representation of culture in the United States? Is that a good rep representation? I mean, to be honest, the way I got these pictures is I just went to Google Images and 
you know, searched culture. And that's what I came up with. Is that a good way to represent? I don't know. Could we put a cell phone and Starbucks? Or does that just represent a piece of the, of the society? Um, you know, a specific type of culture that can um, afford Starbucks. Holy moly. Like, I love getting a large Java chip frappuccino with two extra shots of espresso. And those jokers run about mm, seven or eight dollars. Love them. But uh, I ain't got them dead presidents, you know. So, uh, different types of culture material and non-material culture. Of course, uh, that's kind of self-explanatory as in uh, material culture would be my coffee cup. Non-material culture would be um, the, the ideology that uh, is spread across our society that Anyone can get ahead with hard work and dedication. That would be a non-material cultural fact. I mean, a uh, uh, cultural idea. Is it true? Well, uh, in my experiences, I have worked my ass off and uh, yet to um, financially get ahead. You know, I have trouble meeting my basic needs. You know, I have to uh, lean on government assistance in order to have food. I mean, you know, and I worked so very hard and, um, you know, have you ever worked really hard and studied for a test and, uh, you know, ended up making a D you're like, really? Uh, I didn't know I was going to be on the test. How did, you know, da -da, all these things, you know, you work so hard and it didn't, didn't pay off, but we are taught in our society that we are to pull ourselves up from our bootstraps and just work a little harder you know, it'll pay off. They are, there are some people in the United States that when they turn 18, receive a million dollars. True. Um, what would you do if you received a million dollars when you turned 18? You know who I'm talking about. Donald Trump, you know, when he turned 18, he was able to get a million dollars from his parents or his dad. Wow. What a way to start, you know, what a way to start adulthood with a million dollars for doing nothing but living. Be nice, huh? Anyway, non-material culture. All right. Uh, however, the million dollars is material culture. See the difference. Now, uh, once again, uh, slide number three is culture passed from one generation to the next. Uh, slide number four. Uh, taking for granted orientations to life. Now, this is when we're going to talk about culture shock. This is fun. Okay. And you uh, quite possibly have experienced culture shock. I just came up with a new example in my head. But anyways... For starters, the definition is uh, a sense of confusion, uncertainty, disorientation, anxiety, you know, a uh, feeling of un being uncomfortable, you know, when you enter an environment that uh, has uh, things that are unfamiliar, unexpected. For example, like on your test, it talks about um, how Henslin, the author, uh, went to Morocco and uh, he was shocked by the absence of women in public positions, intense stares directed at him, pushing and shoving at the train station, and total disregard for sanitation by food vendors. All right, so when the author experienced this, it gave him a feeling of culture shock. He was like, whoa, you know, I thought we stood in line to buy train tickets, you see? Um, you know, I, I figured there would be women in public. There's not. Uh, this was a culture shock to the author. Um, let's see. And, and it's based on 
the uh, ex the person that experiences it is based on their uh uh, taking for granted orientations to life. You know, like we take for granted that uh, we in the South, okay, for example, if you're from the South of the United States, um, you may uh, wave at people when you're driving by, okay? Like that's a thing that people do in the South is we wave. And then there was a joke, like, like one finger is, Hey, how's it going? Two fingers is, Hey, how's you and your mama? Uh, three fingers is how's the grandma, you know, I don't know, something stupid like that. But uh, we do that in the South and we smile a lot. People say, why are we so happy? <laughs> you know, cause people from the South smile a lot. Well, um, what if you are from the South and you're used to waving at people as you drive by and smiling a lot? Uh, let's say that you go to another area of the United States and you wave to people as you drive by and uh, people, I don't know, flip you off back and look at you funny and are like, why are you waving? You don't know me, you know, and then you're like, well, okay, that's weird. And then, you know, you go to a, a, the gas station to get gas and you're like, you're smiling and you go in the gas station and you, you t ask the uh, employee, the employee, you know, hey, how's it going? And you're smiling and the employee's like, why are you so happy? You know, okay, what's going on is you may be like, why is everybody acting like that? You were having a culture shock because you're used to smiling and waving in the South. And then you get into another area and they don't do that. And you get negative reactions and you, you know, you have a culture shock, a, a feeling of uncomfortableness or confusion, uncertainty. Now in the picture on the PowerPoints, um, we have, uh, my friend back in the day from grad school, uh, Dr. Jessica Sparks Howell, uh, we went to New Orleans to a um, insectarium and they had a, a chef there with a hat, you know, like dressed, decked out like a chef. And they were making uh, confectionaries and, and cookies and things uh, out of bugs and worms. Not me. All right. Now, look, don't get me wrong. When I was 18 years old, I, I bought a chocolate covered cricket from the gas station and ate it. And everybody thought it was funny. And I had a button that said, I ate a bug club. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't know things have changed since then. Um, not too big on the bugs. Don't want to eat no bugs. Mm, crunchy. Mm, get any teeth. Well, it, as you see in the PowerPoint presentation, there's a picture of a cookie with a cricket on it. And you see Jessica or Dr. Howell uh, in the next picture uh, eating it. They were like cinnamon covered crickets and shit. It was just, mm -mm. Uh, also with us was soon to be Dr. Laura Jean Kerr. Uh, so there's three of us. They ate the bugs in the, in the cookies and I did not. And so they got a stamp on their hand that said, you know, I ate a bug and I did not. Um, it was a culture shock to me because I didn't want to eat no damn bugs. Um, guess what, though? Bugs are nutritious. Bugs will s help you survive. There are people all over the world that eat bugs. It's OK. But me, I did not. And it was a culture shock. You see, that's the, the definition of this, uh, this word, culture shock. Um, have you ever experienced culture shock? Um, let me think of another. Uh, here we go. Now, this is a little different. Uh, comparing rural to urban areas. So I am from a rural area, you know, a small town, uh, southern town, man, real small southern town in South Mississippi. Um, I took uh, an airplane ride to Dallas, but I thought it was New Orleans. And I know what it was. Went to Dallas and then we came back and landed in New Orleans. 
And when I got off the uh, airplane, the smell was atrocious. It smelled like sewer. It just, it stunk. I was like, golly, why does it stink so bad? It's called pollution, you know, in an urban area. <laughs> um, it, it, it is the, the sanitation uh, for all those people in a urban area, a city, a big city. Uh, same thing when I went to Paris, France. While I was in Paris, France, I remember talking about how it smelled bad. Everywhere smelled bad. No, that was culture shock because I'm used to rural areas. I'm sure that if somebody from the city or an urban area or Paris, France came to the backwoods of Mississippi and drove by a chicken, uh, chicken plant, chicken farm or a pig farm and take a whiff, they'd be like, damn, it stinks. You see culture shock. All right. It's kind of a goofy example, but. You know, you may be having a culture shock um, in my class because you're you may be, uh, you know, grew up a reared thinking professors don't cuss. And then here I am like, you know, shit. And you're like, oh, culture shock. Because your culture, professors don't cuss. Well, this culture, we do. <laughs> All right. The next slide, number five, is uh about ethnocentrism. All right. Uh, Sumner is the one that came up with this. What's his full name? Um, William Sumner. William Sumner, Sumner in 1906 came up with this word called ethnocentrism or a person could be ethnocentric. Okay. Uh, and there's a quote. Oh, I see a typo in my PowerPoints. There should be an end quote after reference. Anyway, uh, the quoted definition is uh, one's own group is the center of everything. All others are scaled and rated with reference. Man, I need to work on that PowerPoint slide. But anyway, so basically it's saying that people think they're better than other people. They're superior. You know, their way is the right way. Uh, the other people's wrong. That's being ethnocentric. Okay. Picture on chap, um, on slide five, and this is so true. And, and it goes for um, also uh, learning uh, about race relations. Jane Elliott talks about how the maps that we learn from uh, teach us to be uh, racist. It's funny, uh, not funny, racist, but it's uh, uh, interesting, not funny. You know what I'm saying? That. Uh, the things like that that we are exposed to that we don't think about every day uh, teach us to think that one group is better than the other. And in the picture on um, your PowerPoints, it, it is a normal picture of the world that you may see. You know, if you typed in Earth or or world or whatever, uh, uh, whatever you type into Google, you probably would come up with this map. And the meme on it says, have you ever wanted to be the center of attention so bad that you cut Asia in half? Think about it. You look at that picture and North America or the USA is right in the center of the map. And on the right and left sides of the picture, you notice that Asia, an entire continent, is cut in half. You know, why didn't they cut it in half where the ocean is or something where, you know, people usually don't live, but no, they cut the, the whole continent in half. You see, you see the um, ethnocentrism, you know, saying that uh, the U S has to be front and center and everybody else, you know, around us are, are second. That's being ethnocentric. Uh, me, the, in the example about eating the bugs, I was being ethnocentric because, you know, there's, there, I'm not any, well, I don't know if I was being ethnocentric because I didn't think I was better than other people because I did not eat the bug. But when people do think they're better than others, I've got a really good example uh, when it comes to female genital mutilation. 
I might save that for my, uh, when I come back for my, uh, part two for chapter two. But, um, anyway, ethnocentrism is looking at another person's culture and thinking, Ooh, gross, wrong, bad. I'm so much better than that. I'd never do that. Y'all are wrong. I'm right. There you go. Ethnocentric. A lot of people out there in this world are ethnocentric. Now, slide six is the the contra the contrary to ethnocentrism is cultural relativism. That's what we want. That's the the goal is cultural relativism. Okay, so that's looking at another person's culture and saying, okay, cool, y'all do that. Do your own thing. You know, it's not me, but, you know, do your thing. I don't think anything, you know, I'm not better or worse off than you. You know, we just different. And that's cool. We, I accept your differences as in A-C-C-E-P-T. I accept your differences. I embrace your differences. I learn from your differences, our differences. Do you hear that? You're, you're, you're like I'm the right one and they're wrong. That was ethnocentric, if anybody called that. Anyway, you embrace other person's culture and nobody's better than or worse than the other. They're just different. And I put a picture on there of a tribe in um, Australia, I believe. And it shows you, you know, yeah, it's true. We dress different as in me, uh, an American. I dress different than the people in the picture. I don't think I'm better or worse than them because of the way we dress. They're carrying a spear and I carry a pack of cigarettes. Both are deadly. <laughs> Did you catch that one? Anyway, um, but no, one is deadly to themselves and deadly to others. But no, I, you know, I look at them, cultural relativism. I'm like, that's cool. Y'all do your thing. I'm going to do my thing and we're going to just, you know, move on with the world. All right. That's cultural relativism. So, you know, compare that to ethnocentrism. Thinking, you know, ethnocentrism, I got to be better and, and the best and y'all are wrong and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Ethnocentric, thinking you're better than everybody else. Cultural relativism is saying, I see that we're different, but we will not embrace differences and move on. Okay. Nobody's better than or worse than the other person. Um, let's see. You need to know that definition of ethnocentrism by Sumner. Now, have, having ethnocentrism could be a good thing because it could uh, uh, em embrace or it could uh, make groups stronger because they share the same things. But it causes, you know, strife between cultures because you think you're better than somebody else. So, yeah. Let's see. Here's, an, here's a question from the test, for, for example. When Harry returned from a business meeting in Vietnam, his wife asked him what he thought of, of the Vietnamese people. Harry replied, they're primitive people who eat animals from the streets, drive wildly around town on motor scooters, and talk very fast. Harry's reply best qualifies as an example of ethnocentrism. See? He's like, they talk fast and they drive fast and I can't understand them. And they eat, you know, animals out of the streets. And that's ethnocentrism because you're think you're talking down about them. You're talking bad about them. You're talking like they are lower than you. That's ethnocentric. Uh, now, here's an example question about cultural relativism. In his book, Six Societies, anthropologist Robert Egerton uh, proposed that cultures should be evaluated on their quality of life and not just automatically accepted. This is contrary to which of the following concepts? Cultural relativism. Okay, here's another example of um, the two ideas in a uh, question uh, on your exam, okay? Ethnocentrism and cultural relativism. Uh, the refusal of Christians to accept uh, Wicca as a valid religion is a form of blank. Uh, 
While the sincere effort to understand the practice of having multiple wives in some societies is a form of blank. We would say that ethnocentrism would be an example, the first example, Christians refusing to accept witchcraft or Wiccan, excuse me, as a valid religion. That's being ethnocentric because they're not accepting people that are different from them. Now, uh, the sincere effort to understand the practice of having multiple wives, multiple wives, that is being cultural relative, like saying, you know, hey, I'm not going to have multiple wives, but I understand why y'all have multiple wives. Y'all do your thing. I do my thing. Cultural relativism. Okay. So there's some examples. Um, now, I believe I got enough time. Maybe I can do this in four minutes. Mm, Here is a, a big example of um, uh, cultural relativism and ethnocentrism. Okay. And you decide you know, what you think about this is I'm not trying to get you to think one way or the other. I'm just going to, uh, you know, think about ways that you may respond that are ethnocentric or that are uh, cult using cultural relativity. Okay. Relativism. All right. Female genital mutilation in uh, um, the parts of the, of the world do occur. OK, uh, the World Health Organization or who is uh, trying to get this practice, um, you know, taken away from uh, cultures around the world because it is detrimental to human life. However, let me tell you a little story and tell you about it. All right. So what they do, let's say, for example, we've got a tribe in Ethiopia. All right. Very, very small tribe, but it's a society, you know, and it has its own culture. And part of their culture is to perform female genital mutilation on girls aged uh, eight to 10 years old. OK, what they do is uh, the women of the group. The society, the, you know, the women take the young child, the girl, into a hut and they uh, together, like the aunts, the mothers, you know, the, the relatives, mostly the relative, female relatives of the, of the child. They hold the child down and they uh, use uh, in their culture, what we would call surgical instruments, but I'm pretty sure it is a rock that has been shaped into a knife. Uh, there's no anesthesia. There is no um, numbing mechanisms. Maybe they have some kind of special uh, numbing cream or something. But what they do is they perform a clitoridectomy where they remove the clitoris. And they also use cat gut to sew up the, um, the vaginal area. And they leave a small a small opening for uh, urine and menstrual um, blood to come out um, when it, when it occurs. Um, okay. That's horror. That's a horror story. I just told you now, am I being ethnocentric? Sure. Because I just, you know, told, said that it was a horrible thing. Um, that's torture. Um, you know, but that, like I said, that's me being ethnocentric because let's think about uh, this far, this part. Let's think about this part. Why do they do that to their young girls? And the family members, the female family members are the ones that do it. A lot of the children die from this. A lot of the children are, you know, mentally and physically scarred for the rest of their lives. Why? Why are they doing this? All right. Well, in this culture, in this society, uh, the only way to survive, as in grow up to be, you know, a, an adult, is to get married. The only way that women can survive in this society is to get married. 
the only women that get married are the ones that have had female genital mutilation occurred on, you know, in their life to have this surgery, what some people call female circumcision. All right. The men in the tribe have power to where they say, we're not going to. And in order for the woman to survive, she must be married. So in order to be married, she must have this surgery performed. That's why they do female genital mutilation. Now, why do the men only marry the women that have had this done? Is because this procedure, it's, it's you know, it's, it's terrible for, for, for me to think about it, but, you know, I'm going to try to explain it using cultural relativism in just a moment. But uh, the reason these men choose girls that have had this procedure done is because it supposedly ensures virginity. And it also removes any kind of sexual pleasure that the woman may get from their, uh, you know, physical uh things. So to make sure that the man marries a virgin and she won't cheat, they're going to, to perform a clitoridectomy and sew the vaginal opening closed. Terrible. Um, now, once the young woman is married, the vaginal opening is opened back up in order for intercourse and childbirth to occur. Yet, there's, I'm quite, quite possibly clear, there's no sensations, uh, you know, any sexual desires, those kind of things are not possible because of the surgery when they were young. All right, horrible, horrible situation for these, these people. However, that's being ethnocentric. Cultural relativism would say, the reason they're doing it, their culture, their values and morals tell them that they're supposed to marry women that do this. So in order for the population to perpetuate, they, they practice this culture and they perpetuate the species. Cultural relativism. See, that way I looked at that scenario going on and I put it in a in a way that says you know it's it's they're doing what they're doing you know and move on and I'm doing what I'm doing but the problem is it's 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 a horror show it's it's detrimental to the women in society now but however you look at global stratification and women are treated inferiorly all over the world you know uh, we think we got it bad in the United States. Well, think of Ethiopia. The the young girls are are having uh, you know surgeries performed by uh, you know family members by with tools that are not um, hygienic and you know horrible things to their uh, uh, genitals. However, they're doing it so they can get married and survive. That's, that's using ethnocentrism and cultural relativism together in one example. I believe, now this statistic is outdated. However, I'll give you an, uh, a roundabout idea of how often this occurs. In, a tri uh, in Ethiopia, in 1997, 97% of girls in this area, in e e Ethiopia, had, um, it's, it's a big ordeal in some areas of our world where this is occurring, you know, what should we do about it? That's just a question up to y'all. All right. Well, that's uh, the end of what I wanted to go over right now. Uh, hopefully I'll be back and to go over some more terms from chapter two. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, etc. See y'all.